Hi everybody, it's Mike from Hear the Watchman, and we're here again today with another edition of the Watchman Report. And I gotta tell you, our guest today, I am so excited to have him here. He was just did a speaking engagement here at Hear the Watchman at our luncheon. He is one of the exhibitors here. He's a wonderful guy. Uh, I want to introduce you to and welcome Mr. Mike Norris to the show today. Well, yeah. thank you very much, Mike. Man, it's just great to have you here, brother. I'll tell you. Hey, I, you know what? I, I do have to say thank you for uh, the hospitality and generosity of you, your whole crew. It's really been uh, really an amazing weekend. And I'm you having, having a good time? I really am having a good That's time. Great. I'm a watchman. That you're a watchman, I'm a man, watchman. man. You're, 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 at, you're the watchman. You've spoken here <laughs> the watchman. You are a watchman. Absolutely. Sure. Well, you know, folks, Mike is Chuck Norris's son. And I mean, you know, for me and my age group, Chuck was the man. And, and I'll tell you something funny. You know, we, we live very remote now in the mountains mm -hmm. of Idaho yep. and we don't have any cable. Yep. But we have this, this station that we get called, I think, True Grit. And it runs episode after episode of Tech, or Walker, Walker Texas yep. Ranger. And the week before this, after we would be all burn out at night and sitting on the couch, and I'd flip that on and we were watching episodes of it. You know, yeah. it's just fun to see him out there. And, yeah. and now to meet his son and, and have you here, it's just a, a blessing. Now, you know, you've done a lot of stuff over here. You're a writer, you're a director. Mike actually was the, he wrote and directed Amerigadden. And folks, if you have not seen this movie, you need to go online I think, what, what is the site they can go to to find the movie? Uh, AmerigaddenTheMovie.com AmerigaddenTheMovie.com Just a great flick. You just get it on a DVD, order it from him. But Mike, tell me a little bit about that. How did that all come to be? You know what? The Amerigaddon is the total brainchild of Gary Haven. Is that right? And, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, Gary and I had done a film prior to Amerigaddon, and he says, now we're going to do a film for me. I was like, okay, great. Well, you know, what is it? He goes, well, it, it's about an EMP that knocks out the power grid. And I'm sitting here staring at Gary going, huh? You know, I, I didn't know. You know, I, I was really uneducated at right. that time. But, you know, the brilliance of Gary Haven, um, he could put his finger on the pulse of what was going to happen 18 months down the line. He really right. had the... Uh, wherewithal to understand kind of what was happening so you know it was really Gary's uh, Gary's baby Gary's idea and I just wanted to make that happen for him um, but out of it what, what's really good is um, American may have saved my life because you know before him I'm a believer mm -hmm. I make Christian movies um, you know I'm good I've got Jesus but then once you start um, understanding kind of really what's happening in the world once you peel back the layers of the onion uh, it, it's a it's a pretty nasty ugly place with a lot of deception and deceit uh, within our government within uh, a lot of things and uh, so that was the genesis of Amerigeddon and it just took off and um, just so thrilled to be a part of it well, I mean, I've seen it, and, it, and when I was mesmerized by it, just folks, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I mean, I don't watch much on television, period, and very rarely do I watch a movie. And when I saw Amerigaddon, I couldn't leave, I mean, I couldn't turn the TV off. I was okay. just stuck there yeah. focused on it. So you guys did a wonderful job Thank on you. that. Now, Mike, when you were out on tour for the movie, yeah. doing premieres and stuff, Tell us about the incident that happened. Well, yeah, it's kind of interesting. You know, the film opened up May 13th of last year. Uh, so we opened it up in 30 theaters. You know, it was, we didn't want to go too big, you know, so we opened up in 30 theaters and um, we were the number two movie in all 30 theaters that wow. we were in. We were the number two and we were going, okay, now what? We need to keep this thing yeah, going. Right. Um, so what we did was we took those 30 prints and we started going region to region. Went to Florida, went all over the place. And as I was in Ohio, um, and I was all by myself, and I told everybody, listen, 
if this movie's playing in a theater, I'll come see it with you. And I literally went to every theater that the movie was wow. playing in to go see it. Yeah. Sometimes there was one person, sometimes <laughs> it was sold out. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but it didn't matter. It right. didn't matter. It, 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 so when I was in Ohio, um, I was in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, I was in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and after, you know, after the movie was over, I noticed a, a gentleman in a gray suit. And, and it's been a year now, and, and so things get a little fuzzy and the story can change a little bit. But I just remember seeing a guy in a gray suit. And I go, wow, he looks out of place. Because everybody else is in jeans and T-shirts. And, and somebody that was with me was part of the Columbus PD. Right. And, um, and he was actually taking video at the time. But this guy came up to me and kind of touched me and said, interesting movie, and then kept on going. And it was so odd. It was just so and odd. And I didn't even think, that, yeah, but I didn't even think, but I'm, I'm in a corner of the theater. So, you know, here's the seats and right outside where the little aisleway is. Never thought anything about it. So I'm now going from that theater up to uh, another theater an hour away. I'm driving, I, I'm going, oh, this is weird. And you feel, I go, my, oh, my lips feel funny. I'm going, what on earth is going on? I call my wife and I'm like, oh, I, I, I don't feel good, something's up. And she goes, well, go get a Benadryl. And I took some Benadryl, I got some Cordae, and I went to the screening, and I can't remember really what, Columbus and Cleveland maybe, I'm, I don't remember. And, uh, as I'm in that theater, now I'm not feeling good at all. And I end up leaving it right about 10 minutes into the movie. I call my wife, I go, Val, something's wrong. And now I can feel all of a sudden my eyes are getting really bad. I get back to my hotel room and took some more Benadryl. I go to bed and at three o'clock in the morning, I wake up, my eyes are swollen shut. I've got hives oh. everywhere. Um, and I got on the first flight came right home, went to see my doctor, and he ran tests, and he, and he did blood tests and everything. And really what it was, was, you know, it, like it was equivalent to like a poison ivy. And, right. But it started right here, the doctor could tell it started here, and what I did was, you know, I right. touched yeah. my neck, and then yeah. I touched my face, right. and, and it just spread everywhere. It was horrible. But, you know, it could have been somebody trying to scare me, could have been, you know, if somebody's trying to kill you, they're going to kill you. Plain and simple. There, right. There's no way around. Yeah, they absolutely. want you dead, they'll, they'll, they'll get you. They'll get you. Gonna, and they try. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the thing. But, you know, I, we've had a number of these instances. You know, I've had a helicopter hover right outside my house right. for 30 minutes, just right outside my house. I'm like, what is this? You know, so I think at the time of Amerigeddon, I really think it was with uh, Gary Haven and how passionate he was and and how much he really stirred that hornet's nest. And I just happened to be there at the, you know, yeah, at that I, time. I mean, absolutely. You know? um, but it, it was scary, but look, if they're gonna kill me, they're gonna kill me. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing I can do. And, and the thing is, what you have to realize is they don't want us to hear what you were telling. No, absolutely. They don't want it, they yeah. don't want it out. They don't yeah. want us to know. Yeah. We, we, uh, Pastor Paul Bagley, uh, who is doing the service tomorrow here at the Watchman, uh, he's been visited by the NSA. Believe it or not, Jeannie and I, and this is verified by Pastor Paul and Heidi, we were visited by the NSA. We didn't realize it at the time until afterwards, Mike. Yeah. <clears throat> but what they did, a very wonderfully nice couple that we mysteriously met, and they wanted to take us to dinner. And then while at dinner, they wanted to know everything about these conferences. They wanted to know what we did for preparing at home. What would we do if we didn't have water? Did we have guns and did we store ammunition? And then when we went to leave, the lady came up to my wife and said, I just want you to know that I remember everything you said and we know everything about what you're doing. Wow. Did and they at least buy dinner? They did buy dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that they did at least buy dinner. So now yeah. you're, you're you're here at here the Watchman, and what, what, what's your feeling about it? What do you what do you feel? You know, interesting because um, I feel really good. You know, I'm meeting a lot of really great people. Um, you know, I was 
I was brought into this world, like we were saying, because of American, and uh, you know, it kind of started with Alex Jones, you know, um, getting to know Alex, and then Gary, um, you know, a lot of media requests for Gary. He's just so interesting, and he's such a great interview. So I kind of rode in his orbit for a while. Right. You know, he's like, come on, we're gonna go do this this TV show. Come on, <laughs> let's go. We're gonna go do Fox and Friends. So, you know, I got caught up in his orbit. And it's a, it's a great place, um, you know. This is a man that says what he does and does what he says. Yeah, absolutely. you know, straight straight up. And I just I just love him so so much. Um, he does a ama amazing work. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What he was doing, I think, what is in Haiti? Oh, Haiti, just feeding a quarter million people off, a day. Still. Off the hook. Yeah. Off the hook. Yeah. I mean, saving lives. Yeah, saving I mean, saving yeah. lives. Absolutely. As I'm back here, you know, worried about the batteries in my <laughs> TV remote. Right. Um, but as far as the here, at the Watchmen conference, I, I'm just astounded by the um, the diversity of ideas, which is great. Yeah. You know, everybody's kind of has their own. Uh, interest but everybody comes together and they share that interest with each other and I, I find it absolutely amazing and I got to tell you you know it was uh, for me it was all kind of crazy last minute I'm starting to film on Monday and um, but when I went to that dinner Thursday night uh -huh. and I heard you talking I was like I think this is right where I'm supposed to be right now and it, it, it was very apparent uh, when you were speaking um, and then just the people I I met mm -hmm. and um, I love it and I, I'm coming every year if you'll have me oh you're you're on you're here every year. <laughs> we're gonna get you up on the, we'll get him up on that main stage yeah. next year and I'm gonna tell me tell me you're, you're starting filming on Monday yep. what is it give us some insight um Film's called *The Crossroads of Hunter Wild*, and what it deals with is two years post, uh, whatever disaster, nuclear, uh, you know, EMP, famine, civil war. Uh, it's two years after that. It's a group of believers that are thriving, even though there's chaos in the world. They're thriving, and our the hero we follow, Hunter Wild. Uh, goes out and helps people out there that can't help themselves. But what happens is a demon attaches himself to our hero and brings it back into the uh, town that they all live in. And it starts crea creating chaos within everybody in the town, from the pastor to, you know, our hunter to everybody. And it's just confusion. And then the demonic activity ends up manifesting itself. And there's the big grand battle at the end where our hero's on a table in a weird state, but he's also here in the spirit world fighting off this demon. So really excited about it because, you know, just, you know, people you know, Spiritual warfare is real. It's real. And it's something if we um, hide it, ignore it, don't address it, don't pray over it, don't pray it out, it can come up and bite you. I, I've been, you know, I felt the oppression before. And so I wrote this film because I would hope that if this happened, Mike Norris, me, would act like this guy's act. Wow, that that's powerful right there, yeah. and that's a, that's a message, folks. We all need to hear because we know how busy the enemy is and how the demonic attacks come. Russ Dizdar is our speaker tonight, and you know that Russ, that's all his his yeah. forte. Yep. I mean, really scary stuff. Yeah. You know, but uh, that that how did you come up with that title? Yeah, <laughs> good one. <laughs> You know, hey, thanks to uh, the the Watchmen. Josh Tolley. You know, Josh Tolley. Josh Tully. You know what a great man Josh is. Yes. I mean, here I come in, I show up, and his new wife says, "Oh, my husband can help you figure out a title." And he's like, "Excuse me, dear," but he took the time. He read the script, and that's not exactly the title he came up with, but. You know, just kind of gave us an inspiration. The yeah. town's called Crossroads. Our hero's yeah. name's Hunter Wilde, yeah. and he's at a crossroads yeah. in his life. And um, so the <laughs> the crossroads of Hunter Wilde. That's amazing. Yeah. Now you actually 
you start filming on Monday, Monday. and where, where's, where are you filming? Hey, we're filming out at this place out in Roanoke. It's called DFW Adventure Park. It's a, it's a great place. Larry, who owns it, uh, has just been so great to us, opening up 700 acres, and there's towns and, and all that stuff. And, and not one piece of this film will touch Hollywood. Not one piece of this film God will ever for that. touch Hollywood. We have not one actor from Hollywood, uh, no crew from Hollywood. And where Amerigende, it was just Hollywood dumped on my plate here in Texas, thank God. Um, but we're distributing it right from our own website. We're, uh, you know, keeping it simple. Just and keeping it simple. Is that website up there? Um, yeah, I think our Facebook, it's uh, Norse Moving Pictures okay. uh, is our Facebook. And, you know, if people come check that yeah, out. Norse like, Moving Pictures? Yeah, just uh, Facebook. Yeah, Norse Moving Pictures, yeah. Because awesome. moving, we got to keep moving, gotta you know, keep we got to keep moving. Got to stay ahead of the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so um, that's, you know, that's kind of where uh, we're going to get everything out of. My wife kind of takes care of all that stuff. You know how that is. And, I know uh, that is. But we, we started shooting Monday by uh, summer. We'll be ready to knock this thing out, get it out there, and... Well, uh, hey, I'll, I'll tell you what, we might have to have you come out to Boise, Idaho in August to the Hill the Watchman Conference there. Really? August 18th through 21st, we're going to go out and see the total eclipse of the sun, the whole nine yards, so wow. we'll talk about yeah, that out yeah. soon. But listen, Maybe brother, the, thank you so much. You God bless it. you for thank all you. you're doing, and, and thanks for being here. Folks, again, you can still see the conference. You can still see everything going on here. Go to hearthewatchmenmen.com, click on the button that says live stream purchase or on demand purchase. There's two red bars right in the center of the home page. Tap one of those. You can get live from the conference plus on demand of the conference for 30 days, all for $39. We guarantee that stream. Any problems that we can't fix for you, we will refund you your money. So it doesn't matter what you missed. You will be able to catch up on what you missed and see tomorrow, the rest of today, Russ Dizdar tonight. You will see Pastor Paul Bagley tomorrow. And then we have a speakers panel and a few other speakers tomorrow afternoon. Don't miss out on it. It's a life-changing event. Matter of fact, you'll see it on there if you get it. A couple, a guy asked his girlfriend on stage today to marry him. And it was just such a wonderful thing to be a part of. It's the second time that's happened, Mike. Two others did that in Knoxville, Tennessee, and they're here as husband and wife now on their honeymoon. So go to it, do it. You won't regret it. Thank you for watching today, and God bless. God bless.